All right, before I go into some help with the worksheet that I do today, I do want you to check your answers from the graphs that we did yesterday. You were responsible for numbers four through nine. And um, we got to pay attention to your line. Make sure it's in the right point in the right direction. And it's dash versus solid, and your shading is correct. So kind of what I put here was that you need to, I wish I knew how to create the highlighter. I'll figure that out later. You need to first do your B, plot your B, which was a negative six down here, and then use your slope to plot five more points, or a total of five points. So um, because the slope was a negative three over two, I'm not sure if y'all recognize that I went down, oops, I went down three, and then to the right too. Okay, and then based on the inequality here, that tells me how you're going to, uh, what type of line you're going to have, and how you're going to shade. So, on five right here, you have to do your b of three, and the slope is one. We got to remember that if we don't see a number in front of the x, it's automatically one. And then it is a solid line here. And uh, because it said less than, it's below. Now, you need to remember your special cases for 6 through 9. Uh, Oi, Vux. If it's, so the way I think of it is start here. If I see anything that has um, y equal a number, like if anything is like this, and I know there's not an equal sign, but it's y and a number, then it's a horizontal line. Got to just remember, if it's y equal a number, it's a horizontal line. And therefore, um, the slope is zero. So I think some students are confused on what a horizontal line is versus vertical. You're just going to have to memorize, you know, like your horizon, your horizontal, that's left to right. Vertical, your vertical jump is jumping up and down, okay? Uh, this is another word association, maybe they help you. So on the graphing for seven, because it's a vertical line and we've been shading above or and below, you can't really do above of a vertical line because the vertical line keeps going and going and going. It would keep going up. So you have to think about what it's saying. The symbol here on 7 is less than. So on, if I'm at a negative 5, what numbers would be less than? That would be to the left. So that's why the shading is to the left of the vertical line. So when you have vertical, your shading is going to be left or right. It won't be up or above or below. So here was eight, okay? Uh, we should have had a solid line. It's less than, so it's shaded below. And here was nine, a solid line again. Um, since it's greater than zero, it's on basically, it's basically on the y-axis here. And greater than would be to the right. All right, so what you're going to do is use that information uh, that we Learn yesterday if you want to look at these notes to help you. If you want this out with you as you do your practice problems, that's fine. But make sure your name's on here. So you're going to need to solve for y if necessary. If the y is not already isolated, they want you to graph using solid or dashed lines. Now I know on here it says consider a test point. Um, a test point is just a point to test if it's in the shaded region and the solution set the most common test point is zero zero you can use that point to test an inequality even if you didn't graph it and then you're going to shade um the side where the point is true okay so i'm going to just talk about the test point let's talk about test point real first and before i do my graphing if you didn't if you didn't have a grid here and we wanted to test our point which is zero zero okay you gotta remember that this is representing the x value the x and the y and the y value so because i know the inequality is y is less than a negative three over two x minus i'm gonna go ahead and write that y is less than negative three over two x minus one what you're doing with these values is you're going to plug them into the equ equation. So I like to use 0, 0 because anything times 0 is 0. So really what you would have when you substitute it in, even if I were to write 
zero. Even if I show it less than negative three over two times zero minus one, well, anything times zero is zero. So really, this is saying zero is less than one. Well, is that true or is that false? Is zero less than one? That is false. So that means that the point zero zero is not, oops, sorry. is not in the shade. Oh, my writing is bad. I'll fix that later. So, but guys, we're going to keep this simple. Okay. Kiss it through. Keep it simple, stupid. No, we're not calling each other stupid, but keep it simple. Just graph it. Graph it like you know. Graph your y-intercept first. So that is our negative one here on the y-axis. Our slope is a negative three over two. Okay. So that means that because this is the slope, that means we're going to go down three to the right two. So down three to the right two, plot a point. Okay. That's four points. So I need to do one more. That means I'm going in the opposite direction of three. One, two, three, to the left two. There it is. Now, they want us to graph the line and show the shaded region. So I have to pay attention to the symbol here. And because I see this symbol, you have to remember that's going to be dash, a dash line, and it's going to be below because it's less than. All right, so I'm going to just use the tool, or I'll do one with the ruler. So here's your ruler. It's huge. I don't need it to be that big. And we're going to bring it down here. And we're going to line up the edge. Sorry, on with the points. Which I've gone too far. Oh, it's not lining up right. That's one now. Sorry about this. This app is, I was just using the one where it's more interactive. Okay, I think I got it about. I think that's the best I can get it. So this is a dash line. So we're just gonna have tick marks. That line is way too thick. There we go, take marks, going through, Boop. all right, I'm going to delete this ruler, all right, so we're going to have a little arrow here, so the line continues in both directions, there we go, and then we said we're going to shade below, so I'm going to highlight shading below the line, Ooh, here we go, make sure you fill in your graph, the grid, to show the solution set, the shading region. Oh, I just went a little bit too far. I went past the line, sorry. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, so doesn't have to be, let's get the idea. And now you have to stick, circle the points that are true. So right off the bat, I don't think um, it's asking us to check. Zero, zero. So what, all we're gonna do is check each point. This is exactly how we did it on our notes yesterday. So we have negative two, eight. Negative two, eight is here. That's not in the shaded region. They want us to circle the points that are true. So this is no, so this one doesn't work. Uh, one, three, obviously doesn't work. Zero, negative one, that's actually a no as well because it's on the dotted line, this dashed line, and that's not part of the solution. Negative two, zero is here. There's your negative to zero it's in the shaded so this is the only one that is a solution now you can't have more than one when you're doing this okay so if we have y equals mx plus b we're going straight to graphing three is like a special case okay a special case that what i was showing at the on four through nine that when i'm referring to our special case i'm talking about our sorry let's see if it gets here 
our oi and our vux v the u the x so i always start if i see x equals a number like there there's x and there's an inequality but the same thing is less than or i mean greater than and equal to a number a negative one then this is just a vertical line okay so we should graph a vertical line here and then do your shading um now on a problem like number four this is when you have to solve for y so in a problem like this i'm gonna rewrite it over here to the side just to kind of keep all the work together to x plus y is greater than or equal to negative seven so we have been boxing our y term to help see who to eliminate a little better. But you're always, when we're solving for y, add or subtract, but mostly we're going to end up subtracting the x term. So it's minus 2x, minus 2x. The x terms cancel. Then you rewrite what we have, what you have remaining. So we have y is greater than or equal to, and you rewrite this left side. You don't start with the 7. You go from bottom to the top. Bottom is just 2x and then minus 7. And now it's in slope-intercept form. We don't have to do any dividing here because the y is already isolated. So now you're going to graph it. Okay. You're going to graph just like you did or just like we have been doing. So you will have some go to the back page where you're going to have to solve for y. All right. After you graph it, then you need to test each point. Circle the points that are true for the inequality. So, so on the back, I'm just giving you a heads up. You're going to have to solve for y. And make sure, for example, it's like on, let me see, make sure. Yeah, let's talk about 5 real quick because we're fine on that one. So, like, when you solve for y, because we're going to box this, and we minus the 3x, I'm going to rewrite it over here to the left. This leaves you with the negative y is less than or equal to, I'll put that in actually, negative y is less than or equal to negative 3x minus one. Now, got to pay attention to this negative sign. You can't have a negative variable that we're solving for. So here you would need to divide everything by a negative one. But because we're dividing by a negative number, you have to remember the rule. The rule says to flip the symbol. So the symbol that we have here is this less than or equal to is going to have to get flipped because of these negatives that we're dividing by on both sides. So now this goes greater than or equal to, you keep the y, negative 3 divided by negative 1 makes that a positive 3x, negative 1 divided by negative 1 makes that a positive 1. So now you have your inequality. So don't forget that rule that was in your notes about flipping when you divide by a negative. Okay, so we start with the y-intercept, which is the 1, put a point there, we um, use the slope of the inequality or the equation, which is the 3. So that means our m is 3 over 1. So it means we're going up 3 to the right one. Or we can go down 3 to the left one. I'm going to use the app. So this symbol has the line underneath it. So you're saying less than or equal to. So that means we're going to have a solid line. Let me get that there. So I'm going to connect to these points like such. We need to extend this line so it's on the graph, the whole graph. There we go. And because it's greater than or equal to, because I'm looking at this symbol here, because it's greater than, we're going to shade. Greater means you're going to shade above the line. So that means it's going to have to come over here. All right. All right. And then now you're just circling 
the points that are true for this inequality. So it has to be in the shaded region for it to be true. Well, zero, zero is not in the shaded region. Oops, I don't know why it's doing that. Let me fix that. Oh, that's better. Um, if I go and I plot the point two, seven, uh, two negative seven, that's here. That's not in the shaded region. Same thing if I did three, negative four. And so now if I look at negative four, there it is right there, negative three. That puts me here. So there's my negative four. Man, why is this font so bad? Negative four comma negative three. I don't know if you can see that. All right, so this is the only one that is actually a solution <sighs> or makes inequality true. It's true when it's in the shaded. It's false when it's not. All right, so you are going to complete these eight graphs. I did quite a bit with you, okay? I would say um, ask questions if you need some help, um, but this is going to be a separate grade. So you'll finish this. And you'll take a picture and submit it on Teams. All right. Thanks, guys.